Hey guys, Ivy Mondo coming back with a new bill. Today I'm going to start up with my new bill. All of you have wished me the best on my new bill. My new EV bill. Because what I'm doing, I do EV bills only. Maybe I'm going to do something else, but I am doing EV bills and I know that most of you are wishing me the best the best the best on my new bill today what am i going to do here today to present to you my new bill take a look on that the electric skateboard so what i've been doing right now i've just been like putting the batteries together some of these things here pam, pam. some of these things doing some capacity tests resistance tests just like that that's what i've been doing so let's take a look on that these are the type of charges I use after harvesting my cells from laptops or from drills. As soon as I select the channel, then I will press the mode button down for quite some seconds. Then I will take it down to no test. Then I'll jump into the current. I will select the type of current that I want to charge my cells. It is really important to charge these cells as slow as possible the current must be really slow slow charge them in order to have a long life on these cells so it's really easy to use you just hold the mid the mode button down and later you press it two times and it will take you down to the button and you will select the end of current After during the charging i always go by controlling the temperature of these cells to make sure that they are not getting hot so if they're getting hot uh, with experience i will automatically take out the cell that is getting hot and dump it out because there's no need to continue charging that type of a cell cells are right the voltage as well when to test an internal resistance and when not to test it I just want to do an experiment right now we will we'll get one of these battery and put into ice to retest the internal resistance and know if it actually works or not let's do it so guys when you turn on this thing this is how it actually looks like on the screen and uh, the only thing you have to do now is to grab the negative terminal to the negative terminal of the battery and grab the positive terminal to the positive terminal of the battery and uh, you will read it right now is telling me it's 67 66 milliamps testing this cell at the room temperature it gave us 67 as an internal resistance the milliamps 67 milliamps let's put this uh, cell close to this a back of ice so we should know when to test an internal resistance and when not to test it let's put into a paper bag and we will put just close to the eyes to know how to so we will leave it there for some time and uh, we'll come check it back Five minutes has gone by and uh, let's take out our battery. Yeah, it's pretty chill. Like if you are somewhere which is really cold, putting your batteries outside or in the garage, that is how they should actually feel like they are actually pretty cool. After five minutes, let's check the internal resistance again. Look at that, within five minutes, guys, on coal, from 67 to 75. So what does that tell you, guys? It Actually, it tells me that the best time for me to measure the internal resistance of my cells is when they're in the room temperature. Tester promise you a certain amount of miles during the hotter days and when it's so cold they will promise you uh, amount, not amount of money all makes sense so the tesla is definitely saying that 
that during the colder days during the colder days the internal resistance of the batteries actually go higher so when you go to demand power from that battery pack it is like mm, i can give you i don't have enough power i don't have it when the day get warmer it will sometimes so automatically just gain back this, the power or you just gain back your mileage so it makes sense that my experience of putting my cell onto ice and let it get cold the internal resistance in, five, in less than five minutes the internal resistance travel from 67 to 76 that's crazy right that's a crazy amount of just in five minutes grow up like that so if I leave that cell there for an hour what is it going to read it's going to read like 500 of a thing so it definitely makes sense that when it is cold the Tesla can travel or any electrical can travel for the amount of mile promise when the when you have warmer days what's internal resistance is actually just the way for the battery to behave you behave you the way if the internal resistance is low the numbers are low so it is easier for the battery to just give out power when you're about to power anything you just be like take this power i have power take it i got power take it and it's also easy when you are charging the cells it'd be like come on when internal resistance is right when you start hearing those high numbers on internal resistance that is the time for you to go nope nope that battery is not good so you just need to let it go just let it go don't hang up on that type of a cell especially a cell that is getting warm so quicker it means that the resistance is too high so just let the cell go get your low numbers so they'll be better for you better for the long term and that's it that's all what i can tell you about uh, this internal resistance for now if you these insulator terminals, these spring terminals are really, really good. They help a lot, especially when you want to go and solder your batteries. It's really, really important because you know that the negative of the battery is very, very close to the positive. And uh, that is why that ring terminal over there is really, really great to to put on your cells before you start soldering them so as you see I am almost done with my uh, 120 cells that will go into my skateboard it will be one of the most powerful skateboard in the range I hope so I have never built a skateboard but all these cells are going to go into a skateboard someone says it's going to be bulky but you know what I've seen some bucky skateboards like some big skateboards around it's gonna be heavy okay I don't know the longboard I'm going to make it out of aluminium so it's not going to be wood I'm going to make everything from scratch and uh, that is the way I am going to go so see I continue to solder these things these batteries i have actually reused these batteries that's why you see a lot of soldering of solder actually going on on the battery pack i have reused these cells right now so it's not a good thing to reuse cells especially when you solder them but you know what this is a project this is a diy project let's just make it and see what comes out of it and see when the cells are actually going to die well, they look nice and cute, and I think I'm already done with this three, and it's ready to go into this skateboard. Hey you, before we continue watching this video, have you given me some thumbs up on this video? Or have you clicked the subscribe button? Let's do it. Hey guys, these are the two models that we're gonna install on our skateboard. As I earlier told you, this skateboard is going to be powerful. It has two models. Uh, this is an SK3G brushless out runner model. It is a 6374 size model and it is a 192 kV, so it is a very, very powerful model. 
This photo is really powerful enough to replace a 30cc gas engine and it is rated at a maximum power of 4032 watts. This controller has a maximum uh, load of 80 amps, so that's why I decided to put up an 85 amp as a controller. And we know the more power is being pumped into the model, the more speed it can have. Even though I'm not actually working on speed, I'm working more on the range than speed, but I've decided to put on at least, it is advisable to put on at least 5 amps more than the model, so you can pump in enough current into it. But, so this is everything for now. Hey, right now, you click the subscribe button, or you give me some thumbs up, then let me go hang out.